United States President Donald Trump has uh, landed himself in trouble again uh, fr uh, from some tweets. Uh, this time it was because he uh, retweeted uh, three uh, videos from the, the deputy leader of uh, Britain First, uh, which purportedly shows uh, uh, violence perpetrated by Muslims against uh, persons and property. Now, this was uh, condemned by uh, British Prime Minister Theresa May through uh, a spokesperson initially who described uh, Britain First as a organisation that spreads uh, hate. Uh, Trump responded on Twitter by saying that uh, May should focus on the uh, radical uh, Islamic uh, terrorism that is occurring with it within her country. Uh, rather than uh, focusing on uh, his tweets. Uh, what got me about this, because, uh, you know, yes, I, tr Trump, you know, he, he causes a lot of controversy with his tweets, but it, it seemed there, there was more outrage at the fact that uh, somebody was willing to, you know, post um, inst instances of Islamic violence and terrorism rather than being outraged by Islamic violence and terrorism of itself? I wouldn't, uh, well, somewhat agree, but I think the issue is not what he has tweeted uh, so much, uh, but it's more so of who he has retweeted. Um, uh, obviously, Britain uh, has a class establishment, and there's these middle class, uh, sorry, not middle class, working class uh, folks who are saying enough. Obviously, I don't agree with all the baggage that they carry, but uh, they, they are saying enough. And then uh, Theresa May hasn't actually been, I don't think, outraged as to as to what uh, Trump has retweeted as such, uh, but she's more so been outraged uh, by the fact that he had the quote unquote audacity uh, to uh, um, retweet a, a far right uh, group. Now, I, I, before we proceed with this um, segment, firstly, I'd want to establish a few things. I have been following Britain first, not as a fan, but as more so uh, a curious uh, bystander. And I have seen participants uh, in Britain First rallies who are uh, brown, who are black, um, and, I, I, and in British Parliament they were apparently some kind of white supremacy organisation because they were against their country being flooded by third world uh, Islamic migrants. Uh, I think that they are a silly party, but what I can agree with uh, is the fact that they want to to minimise uh, the 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 Islamification of Britain and of the West, and I think that's something that we all need to stand up for. Is is not saying that we don't like brown people or we don't like Muslims, but we uh, we want them uh, if they are to come here uh, to respect, but also to venerate our cultures, customs, customs and traditions. And that is not happening. But I'm sure that, Tim, you would agree that they aren't neo-Nazis. Uh, they aren't white supremacists. But in fact, they are an all-over-the-shop kind of uh, activist organisation that is basically just against uh, mass immigration. No, they're definitely not. And, you know, if you actually bother to, you know, read their website or mission statement, they make clear that they're you know, not a, you know, white nationalist, anti-Semitic uh, organisation. Now, they're both a political party and a street movement, which is what gets them into trouble because they hold uh, demonstrations about you know, various issues that they're concerned with. And, of course, whenever that happens, you know, the, uh, you know, leftist groups, you know, the socialist Antifa always turn up to, you know, counter protest protest and try and provoke violence, which is why uh, a lot of their leadership have um, been arrested uh, because, you know, they've been trying to, uh, you know, defend themselves against leftist aggression and also the fact that, you know, there's not a lot of free speech in the UK. So, you know, you can be saying something, you know, uh, what most people consider, you know, fair, fair comment, but the police arrest you for, you know, perpetrating uh, hatred. So that, so that's why, um, you know, there, there's this appearance that, you know, Britain First is, you know, a, you know, extremist criminal organisation. Well, in fact, 
we should really thank Britain first because one of the major things that they did uh, was chase down um, uh, Adam Chowdhury, who was an ISIS, an ISIS preacher in Britain. He was preaching for the caliphate. You know, he, he stood by uh, the guy who murdered, who beheaded as Lee Rigby in public. And now they get denounced as racist, anti-Semitic and awful uh, because they aren't uh, champagne sipping Tories. Certainly, I think they're, you know, a bunch of rabble rousers. I don't really agree with them, but you have to give them credit. Uh, they they put Andrew Chowdhury behind bars, a man who was wanting a caliphate, a man who was calling uh, on his followers, in some cases, uh, I believe, to uh, actually join ISIS. And uh, they, they have made some progress. Uh, and, and they actually uh, got in trouble. Well, they did harass uh, this ISIS hate preacher, but... Um, Paul Golding, the, the leader there, uh, got himself in a lot of trouble. They went up, they knocked on his door and they harassed him in the middle of the night. I don't think that's the right way to go about it, but this man is calling for a caliphate. You know, he wants to inspire hatred uh, for more London shoe bombers, for more Ariana Grande concert bombers. This man is a degenerate piece of shit and uh, Britain first helped put him behind bars. Certainly, I don't agree with uh, Paul Golding or Joe DeFranson on everything, uh, but this is a real storm in the teacup from Theresa May. It is disgusting. And it's worth pointing out that uh, Tommy Robinson, who is easily the most uh, effective uh, spokesperson against the Islamization of the UK, he initially came from a street movement that he founded, the, the English uh, Defence League. So, you know, they're not just, you know, hotheads who, um, you know, go, go around, you know, beating their chests in the street. You know, there's actually some, you know, good activists there, and Tommy Robinson is proof of that. Well, yeah, it's, it's, what it is, is it's uh, the leftover archaic uh, classism of Britain uh, where your, your accent really does matter. And if you're, I, I'm Tommy Robinson, you know, if you've got a bit of that going on, then you, you really are in some strife. They will denounce you as some kind of thug or, or some kind of imbecile because of your class or, or how you sound and they will ignore or denounce what you're saying uh, when it's completely worthwhile. Now, I bet Theresa May, I bet Boris Johnson, you know, I, I bet uh, Amber Rudd, for instance, would all live behind big pearly gates and uh, they would stare down at all Britons in their ivory tower uh, and they wouldn't realise... Um, what the Islamification uh, is doing uh, to Britain. Now, you look at the, the rape gangs in Rotherham, the Islamic rape gangs, so tragic. Uh, police didn't want to uncover them because they were scared of being called racist. Um, and you're seeing uh, Tommy Robinson uh, being restricted, having restricted movement in his hometown of Luton. Uh, and you're seeing gag orders uh, put on people like Paul Golding uh, for speaking out against ISIS, ISIS imams in Britain. Uh, this is the state of politics in the West at the moment. Uh, and of course, the, the aftermath of you know Trump's uh, retweets is that uh, MPs in the, the House of Commons, uh, led by uh, Shadow Home Secretary Diane Abbott, have called for Donald Trump's uh, state visit to the UK to be revoked. Now, Theresa May has said she's not going to do that. Uh, though uh, Amber Rudd, her Home Secretary, said that he should uh, delete his uh, tw uh, Twitter account. And Theresa May, she's also uh, reaffirmed that she uh, wants her government to, you know, crack down on the so-called, you know, uh, far right. Okay, now, I don't know. I, I don't view any... People who are anti-Islam uh, in its preaching... Well, Islam is an inherently violent religion. Uh, now, uh, you look at the first part of the Quran, 
uh, Muhammad is a largely peaceful man. He, he he hung around, I believe, a Christian heretic, um, you know, and it was it was you know it was a general decent message. But the problem is with the Quran is that the the second half of the Quran abrogates the first. So the 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 genocide, or I guess the well, the beheading of the Jews that he led, you know, killing of Jews, uh, the sleeping with the uh, nine-year-old girl, you know, all that abrogates the first half of peace and love. Now, that is the problem with Islam. That is actually a, a an Islamic um, uh, way of understanding uh, the Quran. It, it's a well-established, uh, you know, Quranic uh, kind of scholarship that most uh, Muslims follow, uh, and, and that's a real problem. Uh, if people can't uh, speak up against the Islamification of Europe, uh, if people who are deemed, uh, I deem people who are far right uh, to be skinheads uh, who want to kill all brown people. I don't deem people to be far right if they say that they don't want their 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 women to be raped in Rotherham. I don't deem people to be far right if they are sick of terrorism, and I certainly uh, don't deem. Uh, people, you know, far right, if they are, you know, really concerned about their uh, security and their liberty and their freedom in their own country. And we have to remember that this rhetoric is coming from an allegedly conservative government. And if this is what is coming from a conservative uh, government in the UK, then you really despair for the future of that country. Well, I, I don't really think it's uh, they're not far right, right? What, what is happening is it's, it's a class struggle and they want to uh, control uh, opinion. Uh, they want to be the, the sole formers of opinion and they don't want people like Britain First to actually have a voice. And uh, you're definitely seeing this through uh, the erroneous restrictions on free speech at the moment, uh, the attacks on people like Donald Trump, purely because they don't fit into the uh, nice um, uh, political class of people who are, are well-mannered or, or what have you, uh, but they are outspoken and they speak the truth uh, to a large degree. This has been an Unshackled Fast. Please like, comment and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.